Hey, here we are, live. Hey, everybody. This is to my personal friends here on Facebook, but I was really compelled to spread this message to a lot of people, especially friends and family that may not know this information. Um, so this is about Amazon.com and the things you need to know as a shopper on Amazon, as well as, especially um, as we lead into Prime Day, which is tomorrow, which is basically um, their invented Black Friday, if you will. And there are so many misconceptions online about shopping on Amazon. And having been in retail the last nine years, I just feel compelled to share this information. And um, because I'm surprised when I talk to people how little they understand or even know about this issue with basically counterfeit products on Amazon.com. So in this live video, what I'm going to tell you guys about is um, how to detect if products as good as, as you can from across the computer screen. Hi everybody, thanks for joining. My word, I have all kinds of friends joining. Haley, Sky, Chana, Amy, good to see you all. So, um, and please feel free to comment and ask questions as well. I would love this to be interactive. Although, um, I'm gonna ask you to share this information if you know anybody that shops on Amazon or online that really um, could benefit from saving money because by preventing issues of buying counterfeit products. Um, so before I get started, um, because there may be people that see this on replay, so if you do watch this um, on replay, please understand that I will um, comment, um, you, know, you can leave a comment and I will get back to you. Um, ask any questions that you have as well as please share this broadcast if you're interested in educating others on how to pr protect yourself when purchasing online as well as especially um, on Amazon. So just to quickly um, tell everybody who may not know who I am, my name is Jana Francis, and I'm the founder and president of Steels.com, which is an online marketplace for women's products. But um, I, I wanted to just qualify why I know a lot of this information um, before telling you about it. So I started Steels.com in my basement nine years ago. Um, just And this isn't about Steels.com, it's about Amazon, but I do want you to understand um, that, that I am qualified to have this discussion and to help people understand the number one problem in retail, literally the number one problem in retail is counterfeits on Amazon. So I'm gonna get into that in a second. But um, I have worked with, in the last nine years of starting Steels.com, I've worked with over, over 1,900 brands. I've sold over $90 million in products online, in revenues. So please know that um, I know what I'm talking about and I, Justice Bowens, what's up? Um, so I know what I'm talking about and I definitely just want to to share this because as I talk to other people I'm blown away at how um, how people don't realize that this is such an issue so I'm gonna get right into it um, one of the biggest things you need to understand is that Amazon completely and totally allows counterfeit products to be sold under the brand's name on amazon.com okay so when you go to type in something like Birkenstock, if you're a Birkenstock shoe shopper, and you go to Amazon.com, it is very likely, and in fact right now it is almost 100% likely that what you're buying is fake. And I'm, I, I'm pausing because this is that serious, people don't realize. So after this broadcast, I would encourage you, if you don't believe me, go to Amazon.com and type in the word Birkenstock. The very first listing on the top left of Amazon.com is for a women's Birkenstock sandal. By the way, Birkenstocks won't sell on Amazon right now. You can Google that too. As of last July 1st, Birkenstock came out last January, a year ago January, and, and said as of July 1, Birkenstock will no longer sell on Amazon.com. But if you go there right now, as a matter of fact, as we speak on Amazon.com for Birkenstock, there are over, let's see here, 1,427 results for Birkenstock. I wouldn't be buying those. So if you, if you do this later and you go to the very top left of the screen and click, it says the women's Mayari sandal, okay? And then you go and read the reviews. You will see as you read even the top five, people saying, oh my gosh, these are fake Birkenstocks. These aren't real. I know Birkenstock. I've bought Birkenstocks for two, three, four years, and these I've had for three weeks, and the middle piece of the toe came out. This is nothing that's new to me. I live and breathe this problem every day. 
Because as I mentioned, I've worked with over, over 1,900 brands in the history of startingsteals.com, and this is by far something that comes up daily when we have these discussions. Not just me, but a lot of employees on my team. And they're saying, because we at steals.com, you may or may not know, we have a daily deal. And as we're price hunting and making sure that we really are providing a steal, of course, Amazon is a place we double check. It is, Brian, it is criminal because Amazon does know what's going on. They absolutely know this is an issue and they've created it. And I'm going to get into how they've created it and then what users can do to stop this problem. Or at least it's not going to stop this problem, but it can prevent you from getting ripped off by a third party seller on Amazon or even on Amazon. So first of all, go to Amazon, type in Birkenstock, the very top left listing, just do that and read the reviews and you'll know and you'll see why. And then Google Birkenstock and Amazon and you'll see that Amazon came out and said very clearly, or that Birkenstock came out very clearly and said, we are coming off of Amazon because of the problem that I'm about to tell you. So um, this is not just Birkenstock, okay? I'm gonna read you the top knocked off brands on Amazon. In fact, you can Google this. There is, you can look up the counterfeit report and it says that Apple reported that 90% of the Apple products on Amazon.com are fake. 90%. So that's really, really sickening. And here are the number one knocked off brands and in some cases the products on Amazon. Nike, Hasbro, Cuisinart, Apple as I mentioned, SanDisk memory cards, <laughs> Samsung memory cards, um, Apple iPhone chargers, Gillette razors, guys, Gillette razors. <laughs> Vans iPhone cases. By the way, Vans doesn't make iPhone cases. Ask them. But they're all over Amazon for iPhone 5, 6, and 7 cases, and Vans doesn't make them. Um, Apple Beat headphones, you know, those like two, $300 headphones. True Religion Jeans, which by the way, just had to file for bankruptcy protection. And I would not doubt that part of it is because of this problem. Because Nordstrom and Macy's and those brands that used to, or those retailers that used to buy from True Religion, and I'm kind of making an insinuation on this one, but I guarantee it's probably true because I see it happen with Michael Kors as well. That they go to Nordstrom or whoever, they go to buy the True Religion jeans, they go price check on Amazon and they go, well, I'm not going to buy those from you because they're cheaper, like people aren't going to buy them from me because the ones on Amazon are fake and people don't realize that. We had Michael Kors handbags on SheSteals.com, one of my websites, last Friday, 100% authentic and a letter from the brand. We were price compared by several customers saying, you know, I really want that one, but it's cheaper on Amazon. It totally is cheaper on Amazon, but the one on Amazon is fake, okay? Um, Duracell batteries, can you believe that? Duracell freaking batteries, fake. I personally have bought Paul Mitchell tea tree oil, um, shampoo and conditioner. It showed up, fake. How do I know? It stunk, it didn't smell the way it was supposed to, and the little plastic on the outside, you know, the little writing on the container was just coming off in the shower. I'm like, this is not, this absolutely does not, this isn't right. Then I went to the listing and everyone's like, these are fake, these are fake. I'm like, why did I not read the reviews? So that being said, I think I've, I've, I've at least, you know, explained that, that it is a problem that people do not realize. And now I'm going to help you understand the three different ways that Amazon sells and, um, and how you could possibly prevent this from happening to you. So there are three different ways in general that Amazon sells. One is Amazon Direct, meaning it is bought by Amazon and it is sold by Amazon. Um, it is less likely in these cases that it is less likely if you, if you buy it from Amazon if, they are, if it says bought and sold by Amazon it is less likely that you will be getting a counterfeit, but it can still happen and I'll explain why in a minute. That's the safest way to buy on Amazon and quite honestly, the only way I will buy on Amazon, but even then, um, you know, buyer beware. Second is the Amazon Marketplace. So the Amazon Marketplace, it, it will say sold, sold on Amazon and it will sold on Amazon by a third party seller. And these third party sellers, uh, some of them are very legitimate and, and excellent um, marketplace sellers. Some of those marketplace sellers even sell on my marketplace. But so some of them are excellent, but many of them are Chinese factories that are selling direct to the consumer from their factory 
um, directly you know, here from China. And that cuts out many people in the supply chain um, as far as you know, direct from the factory to the brand and the brand to Amazon. And then Amazon to you, which is what most people think actually happens. Um, so the most dangerous thing is to buy from a third party seller on Amazon. You absolutely have to read the seller reviews. Um, and that is the largest uh, contributor to the counterfeit problem on Amazon. Um, and then the other one is Amazon FBA, which is uh, the industry term, but um, it is stored and shipped by Amazon. So for example, a brand um, will, will get their product and send it to Amazon so that Amazon can ship it on their behalf. Um, that is, and it could also be a third party seller because li literally anyone could use Amazon FBA if they chose. Um, those are also not guaranteed to be authentic. So one of the reasons for this is this, it's called commingling, okay? Um, and, or aggregation, if you will. There's commingling with the product listing and there's commingling with the product in the warehouse, okay? So one of the things people may ask, why in the world would I just type in Birkenstock on Amazon and get something that's fake? There's no way. Yes, there is, as I just proved to you. Um, but Amazon aggregates products by the actual, um, the, the actual product uh, itself, okay? So it doesn't matter who's selling that product or who says they're selling that product, um, whether they're a third-party seller or whether they're Birkenstock or whether it's a factory in China. If someone says, I'm selling a Birkenstock um, women's Mayari sandal, it will all show up under one listing, okay? So you could call that commingling, you can call it aggregation, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, what, you know, who's selling it, everyone that's selling that one product will show up under one listing, okay? So that can create, first of all, a tremendous amount of confusion with, with consumers, huge amounts of confusion, because you just assume, so many people just assume they're buying from Amazon, right? It's very, very simple, and, and you, would, you would just think, why, you know, a lot of people just assume, well, no, Birkenstock made the shoe, they shipped it to, oh my gosh, I just saw Ken and Brian in here. <laughs> Ken Campbell, quick shout out to you and Brian. I used to work for both of them, by the way. Learned a lot. Um, <laughs> yes, exactly. So anyway, that being said, um, I totally lost my train of thought because I have so many of my cool peeps in here. J.S. Gilbert, what's up? Um, anyway, um, so the, the commingling and the aggregation of listings, okay? So that becomes a problem on Amazon as you're looking at the listing itself but it is also a problem in the warehouse. A lot of consumers do not realize that even if they're buying a product that says sold and shipped by Amazon, that that product is, can be very commingled and stored even in the same pallet and location as the counterfeits that were brought in from a Chinese factory because they want it all stored by the product listing, okay? So quite often a brand um, can ship their product to Amazon FBA. You can even order from the brand themselves and get the one that's counterfeit, that someone else shipped. It happens all the time, okay? And all of these things can be Googled and, and you can find, find it. I am not saying anything that isn't factual that can't be, um, you, know, uh, you know, authorized a different way. Um, not authorized, but um, <laughs> what's the word? Anyway, you get what I'm saying. So again, three ways that um, Amazon sells. Direct, whether, because Amazon buys it and they store it and they ship it themselves. That's Amazon Direct. And on the site, it says sold and shipped by Amazon. That's the safest way to buy. But as what I just mentioned, it does not guarantee you're going to get the authentic product. Um, verified, thank you, Haley. That's my good cousin coming in. And JS, thank you. <laughs> you guys are with me, see? Um, and then two, the Amazon Marketplace, which are third-party sellers uh, that can basically, they run amok, they can do almost whatever they want. Um, and then FBA, shipped, uh, stored and shipped by Amazon, but that doesn't necessarily mean that Amazon bought it. It just means that whoever is selling it um, is paying Amazon to fulfill and store that for them. Um, so uh, I hope that I've enlightened you guys on, on a few issues there. Um, I'm going to tell you the five ways that you can be, um, be a little bit more educated when you do buy on Amazon to try to make sure um, that you're getting an authentic product, not guaranteed. Um, so I'm going to give you the, those, those five tips, but I want to tell you a quick story from um, 
from three brands. Uh, the unfortunate reality to, to this live broadcast is I've wanted to do this for a long time and I originally thought I shouldn't do it myself because I don't wanna, I wanna be able to bring in the brand creators and the product creators and have them tell their story and um, you know, give them a platform of which to say how Amazon has so negatively impacted their business. But so far, nobody dares to get on camera. Everyone is so scared about retribution from Amazon that they won't join me in this. So that is one of the reasons I used the Birkenstock example because that is very, very public. The CEO of Birkenstock came out and did all the press releases saying we will no longer sell on, on Amazon as of July 1st. So that's one. People are just afraid of the rep retribution. Um, and, and so that's one of the reasons I use Birkenstock. But I'm going to use another example really quick, and it's called the, the forearm forklift. Now, I don't know this person. Um, but this is also, I will actually put the link to his video in the comments of this broadcast when it's over. But the creator of the forearm forklift, it's an, in a sense um, a product that you can put around your arms and uh, it gives you like the ability to lift three times your weight. So it's used quite often to move appliances. He creates it in 2004. The company explodes because he was, um, I believe, highlighted on Good Morning America or something of the like. And then here comes Amazon, who starts selling his product. Um, by the way, he didn't sell his product on Amazon. It was knocked off by Chinese factories, who then started selling it on Amazon. As of 2010, the last I read um, in, in one of the articles, he almost had to go bankrupt because the product is so completely knocked off. Um, True Value, Ace Hardware, a lot of those companies didn't want to buy it anymore for their stores because it was so much cheaper on Amazon. And when a user is standing in a store and you're going, oh, let's see, I'm at Best Buy and I want to check out this SanDisk memory disk. Oh yeah, Amazon.com on your phone. Oh, so much cheaper. Click, click, buy. Thanks, retail store. And by the way, it's not just brick and mortar that it happens to, it's sites like mine as well. Oh, this Michael Kors bag is cheaper on Amazon, so I'm just gonna go get it. Well, guess what? It's not a level playing field, because half of it is fake. I'm using half of it as a paraphrase to what it feels like. And I know I'm seeing a lot of angry signs, and I, I, um, I am just blown away that this isn't so widely known, and that's why I'm doing this broadcast, I'm sick of it. It is killing product inventors. It is ruining their businesses. It is, allowing Chinese factories and knockoffs to single-handedly destroy their business, their idea, their dream, it's killing entrepreneurism. It really, really is. And as a matter of fact, the Outdoor Retailer Show is one of the most well-renowned retail shows um, that, there, that there is, and it's um, currently located in Utah. And last year, um, there was a, a large session on Amazon, and... An, an expert on Amazon, I wish I, I, I should have researched his name so I could quote him, but he literally agreed that the counterfeit problem on Amazon is the number one problem in retail. The number one problem. It's not because people aren't going shopping at the mall anymore. It's because they're buying on Amazon thinking they're getting one thing and getting another, right? That is what's creating such an unf unfair playing field. And one of the reasons for this, again, is that you know many years ago, uh, Chinese factories thought that the Amazon was a river in Brazil, right? They didn't realize that they could, uh, you know, and Amazon went out and recruited a lot of factories, recruited a lot of Chinese sellers to come join Amazon and ship directly from the factory to the customer. And that is one of the things that has exaggerated this problem because when they aggregated all of the listings by product, that is what created this as a consumer, I'm looking at my computer right now at an Amazon listing, that's what created this unlevel playing field because again, all of the product listings are put in one. And so when you're thinking you're getting a Birkenstock for $39.95, when you're standing there at Nordstrom looking at the real one, you're really not. And here's the second thing that's happening. You get that Birkenstock and three weeks later, you're like, you know, they're going downhill. And sorry, Birkenstocks, I, I continually use you, but it is the best example that is most public. Um, uh, but that you go, hmm, you know, this Birkenstock must be just going downhill. They don't, they don't make the shoes like they used to anymore. And then you go to Amazon and you leave a review. And you say, you know what, these just don't fit the way they used to. I've been wearing Birkenstocks for 20 years and these just aren't right. So then you as the consumer, two months later, decide, I want to go check this out. And you read the reviews and you go, oh my gosh, wow. Birkenstock, maybe they're just not good anymore. You just don't know. 
And so that's why Birkenstock came out and specifically said, we no longer will sell on Amazon.com. So there's that. Wonder if the same is happening on Alibaba. Absolutely, Brian. Um, it's actually, I believe, uh, one of the reasons that this problem, oops, one, one of the reasons this problem started, but that's another broadcast, which I'm going to do, by the way. By the way, I'm going to start doing a little bit more of these because I did not realize until I really started talking to consumers about this issue how little people understand about it. And it really ticks me off when I'm seeing all these sale posts for Prime Day and all this stuff. And I'm realizing, oh, man, I got to at least help people realize that some of what they're getting could be a huge issue. Now, what I'm not saying, I'm absolutely not saying don't shop on Amazon. I'm not saying Amazon is an amazing company, and I'm not saying um, don't shop on Amazon by any stretch of the imagination. I am only saying that they need to be held accountable for the problem they're creating in retail, how they're hurting product and vendors, they're hurting brands, they're hurting the entrepreneurial dream as it relates to creating products, right? They're not hurting the entrepreneurial dream of, of having a Chinese factory and shipping straight to the US. Those guys are loving it right now, right? But they need to be, they need to clean up their ethics. They need to be more accountable for the problem. And of course, you'll find press releases too. Oh, Amazon.com takes counterfeits very, very, very seriously. But let me just read you something that they told one of the brands that's currently for sale on my website yesterday. They said, buy it and prove it, okay? Buy it and prove it. So he, this particular gentleman uh, asked me not to mention his brand name um, because he has sold on Amazon since 2006 and they've done incredibly well selling on Amazon except for the last three years because of the counterfeit issue. But he created, let's just call it a really cool kitchen widget, okay? So this kitchen widget is selling very, very well on Amazon. And all of a sudden, he starts getting negative reviews and realizes, wait a minute, oh, let me take care of this customer and realizing, wait, I didn't, I didn't even sell that. They did, that order didn't even come through me. I never, we never shipped that order. So then they're starting to realize all these Chinese factories are selling under his name, okay? It's under his product name. It's images of his wife using the product in their kitchen that they professionally paid to have done. It's the writing, the copy that they sat up all night long to create together, to create this product, right? And they're realizing, oh, wow, okay, so Amazon stole our images, they stole our patent, not Amazon, I'm sorry, the third-party sellers that Amazon is allowing to sell on their platform. They're allowing them to steal images, content, patents, trademarks, registered trademarks, their names, etc. okay? Because again, they allow it to all go under one listing, so you can get a product and not have to do any work if it's already for sale on Amazon. Click, click, done. So that is, uh, it's, it's a really, really, really big problem. So he says to me, please don't tell my name, but please tell him the following things. My wife and I spend a, uh, at least two hours a day policing our own product listings, not, not their own product listings, but policing their own product that they invented on Amazon and contacting third-party sellers that are selling it illegally, sending them cease and desist letters, and then, and then sending all the information to Amazon. And again, Amazon emailed him yesterday and said, buy it and prove it. So he actually sent me a picture. And actually, um, when this broadcast is over, I'm going to put a link um, to a video that will perfectly epitomize what I'm telling you right now. Um, that an entire corner of their office is filled with nothing but fakes of his product that he had to buy from Amazon to then take pictures and then submit to Amazon all these forms that say, okay, I bought it from this seller and this is what I got and here's the picture. Why do you have to do that when you're a product inventor? When all Amazon needs to do, and I realize this is probably a simplified answer. However, just only let the brand sell the brand unless they have a receipt, an invoice, a purchase order. Prove it. Prove it that you bought this from the brand. Prove it. Before you can sell it under another brand. I, won't, I don't allow it on steels.com. And, and it's not hard to do. Trust me. Oh, hey, you want to sell Michael Kors on my website? Let me see that you got these from Michael Kors. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Let's do it. Right? 
But that's not required on Amazon's marketplace. And it makes it very exaggerated because of the commingled listings, like I mentioned, and the commingled storage. So uh, I realize this won't be popular with employees of Amazon.com, but I literally do not care because it is the number one problem, number one problem in retail, and it has to get out. So um, those of you that have recently joined, hi, how you doing? <laughs> um, this is my personal Facebook page. So this is, this is hard for me to like talk and not talk to you guys because I'm like seeing so many of my good friends. Hey Camille. So I'm like, what's up? But aside from that, uh, this is a big problem. Tomorrow I'm going to come back on here and I'm going to talk about Amazon reviews. Hey Jackie, I'm going to talk about Amazon reviews and how you can navigate through those and understand which ones are real, which ones aren't, um, and how to understand those. Um, and they need to stop creating commercials that trigger my Amazon echo. Right, Brian? I know, it's crazy. Yeah, more people do need to know this, Camille. So I asked earlier, um, anybody who's willing to, to share this broadcast, I would love it. It will help product inventors. It will help your friends and family. Anybody who shops on Amazon, um, it, will, it, will, it will help them um, prepare to not get ripped off. So I will um, quickly tell you the five ways that you can prevent, or at least you can't prevent it 100%. But um, here are five ways that you can um, try to make sure that what you're getting on Amazon is real. The number one thing is to read product reviews. I have personally bought four items on Amazon even since. <laughs> I've done this. I have, I have, um, thank you, Camille. Thank you, Brian. Thank you so much for all the shares, you guys. Um, I personally bought four items on Amazon that were fake. I mentioned earlier the shampoos. I've bought a Yeti coffee cup. I, I won't even go too much further, but it, it's, it's crazy that even I, knowing all of this, um, had it happen to me too. So number one is read product reviews because as you scroll down, you can see um, if people are like, whoa, I just bought mine and they're fake. Now, what I will warn you there is sometimes that's a third party seller mad at another third party seller that's selling the same product so they want to make one guy's listings or reviews get worse. Yeah, you had the Yeti thing happen to you too, Haley. Again, killing product inventors. Yeti is freaking awesome and they shouldn't have to deal with that. They have several employees that do nothing but police Amazon reviews. I've talked to them personally. It's sickening. So one, read the product reviews, but again, please understand that when you do, you have to make sure that it is from a verified purchaser, okay? That doesn't necessarily guarantee that the product um, wasn't bought by the third party seller, right, to do that, but it does at least, you know, it's safety in numbers, okay? Um, two, make sure when you're buying from Amazon, if you're concerned about counterfeits, that you are uh, buying from uh, Amazon where it says sold and shipped by Amazon. Oh yeah, there's Jane. <laughs> and then um, four, if you're really concerned, contact the brand. Go to the brand's website and say, hey, I'm just curious, I wanna buy this on Amazon. I'm just wondering, um, A, if you can give me a better deal, just kidding. Or B, um, is this real? Tell me, I, I, I really am concerned about authentic, authentic, authentic products on Amazon. Um, and then, uh, Trust your gut. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is, okay? Um, the, it just, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're all of a sudden getting an Apple iPhone, you know, um, cord that's at Apple for 28 bucks for $7, I guarantee you it's fake. So again, trust your gut. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is. Um, so contact the brand, read the product reviews, um, buy from Amazon Direct only, meaning sold and shipped. And I'm not telling you not to do any of these things. I'm only just telling you that this is a way to prevent yourself from getting something counterfeit. Um, and then, um, again, contact the brand and then uh, be vocal if it happens to you. So if, you know, because one of the reasons that this problem persists is because people like me who know about it aren't doing enough about it. Right? And so guilty is charged here that I have known this for so long, but I've never actually come out and said, you know what? <laughs> what you guys are comparing on my site and on Amazon are two different things, right? It's not the same fabric. It's not the same material. So, and then, so yeah, share your stories, be vocal if it happens to you. Um, and that will, that will help, um, that will help other people uh, tremendously. And I'll, I'll leave you with one really quick story and I'll be back tomorrow to um, talk a little bit more about how to navigate the reviews and understand um, you know how to really um, under know which if you're what you're getting um, is going to be real and if what you're reading is real as well 
because um, you know the good there's good bad and ugly with the Amazon review program but um, there was a particular nursing cover company who again asked me not to mention him uh, that we used to sell many years ago on one of my websites babysteals.com very simple structure as an example, his nursing cover sells for $50 in retail stores. We would promote it for 24 hours um, at a discount, uh, typically $24.99 or $19.99. Um, also realize that the outlet stuff is different too. Oh, wow, JS, yeah, I don't even know enough about that to speak on it, but um, that's a really good point. Um, so we would, we would sell his product on, on Baby Steals, um, you know, high quality nursing cover with a picture of his beautiful wife holding their baby, um, on the packaging, it's it's their patterns that they created, it's their prints, it's their fabrics that they hand, you know, they, they carefully selected. Um, Carrie Ann, yeah, exactly. Hey, sweetie. So that being said, he wanted to do another feature with us and Carrie Ann might've been involved in this because she, you know, worked with us for a very, very long time. Um, is that you go and price compare on Amazon. Oh, wait, hold on. Why is your product $8 on Amazon when we used to buy it from you for three times that and resell it in the 20s when your retail is 50? And he's like, those aren't mine. Those aren't mine at all. He claims that Amazon sold the data on his top two selling prints because he was selling on Amazon, but at full price. He had about eight or nine prints. He claims that Amazon took his two best selling prints, gave the data to a Chinese factory, a Chinese factory knocks off those two prints. They pirate the picture of his wife and baby. They create a really flimsy, crappy package. They use different threading, different fabric, a totally bad knockoff, and sell it for $7.50. Okay? It's coming right to you from a Chinese factory, and you're thinking you're getting a deal or a steal. But guess what you're getting? You're getting a knockoff from someone else's invention. And the only one that wins there is Amazon and China. <laughs> so it's bad. It's really bad. So I'm like, that's not possible. Are you kidding me? How does this even happen? Carrie Ann says, cha -ching for everyone but the original creator. Exactly. And Carrie Ann and I are both very, 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 very passionate. And everyone who's, you know, worked and been at steals.com, we are passionate about products and brands and product inventors. Gia says, coach wallets and purses and outlet stores are mass manufactured garbage and will sell on eBay or Amazon like the real deal. Yes, I actually had somebody contact me at Steels the other day saying, you know, I've been on Amazon, I want a new outlet to sell because steels.com is a marketplace now. Um, and I said, okay, well, what products and um, help me understand what you're wanting to sell. And she's like, oh, I just go to the, the, I don't really know yet. I go to the retail or the outlet stores and I buy things that look like they're more expensive online and resell them. And that's all fine and dandy for garage sales and eBay, but I, would n I will not allow that. She's like, well, I've sold on Amazon for like 10 years. And I'm thinking, it's not going to happen on my site. No way. Anyway, um, so what this, what this nursing cover inventor has had to do is he has had to, one, pay his, his factory, his real factory, to put a black light stamp on the outside of his packaging because he has had to literally purchase the same thing. Amazon tells him the same thing. Buy it and prove it. Buy it and prove it. So he has to buy his own product on Amazon, get it, and go, oh my gosh, thinner fabric, worse, um, worse threading, terrible packaging. They stole the image of my wife, and they're selling it for less than my manufacturing costs. Hi, Cammy. Good to see you again. Um, so... Yeah, it's it's a huge problem, and he didn't he he is in the middle of trying to file a class action lawsuit against Amazon. So um, ask me not to say any mention his name, like most of the brands that um, I've talked to about this. But I will tell you this: um, when you're buying a baby product on Amazon, be very 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 careful, because a lot of baby products have a lot a lot of safety testing baby slings, baby carriers, um, uh, strollers, car seats, and all those things. I don't really quite understand if strollers and car seats are knocked off to the degree that a lot of other products are, but I know for sure that a lot of baby carriers are. And uh, I was even told by another very large baby manufacturer that their number one problem in their company is uh, proving that the listings on Amazon are not a knockoff, and that is scary. 
Because as, as Carrie Ann says, you're putting your baby in that thing and the, the real deal is tested and it's tried and it's true and they have insurance that protects their brand, right? This guy that I talked about earlier, the, the forearm forklift carrier, he was getting lawsuits from people that bought the fake one on Amazon because they didn't even know they were getting the fake one. So Robert Graham, oh shoot, your comment just scrolled up, JS. Um, but read JS's comment. So, Anyway, guys, um, I really appreciate all of you watching this um, broadcast and sharing it. I hope, if anything else, um, you understand two things. Uh, one, how passionate I am about uh, supporting uh, product inventors and people that create brands. Um, I would love it. Many of the people that I'm Facebook friends with are people I've worked with over the last nine years at steels.com, and I really hope that um, you would be compelled to share your story. And if not, I will share it for you in a confidential way like I just did. Um, but I would love any of you that have had similar experiences, post it in the comments here. Um, I would love it if you are concerned about this to share it with others, because I promise you, you will prevent just by the sharing of it, you will prevent someone from getting something fake. And, uh, maybe that is a huge deal and it, maybe it won't be right. It could be, you know, nobody necessarily gets hurt when you buy a fake Apple iPhone cord, but you got, you didn't get what you paid for, right? And some people don't have problems with counterfeit products, but I think the consumers need to know that it's counterfeit, right? You need to know, or not verified by the brand. Something that gives the consumer an extra level of protection, and that's what I'm asking for. Um, so I, I, just, I just think Amazon needs to be held more accountable um, by consumers, and that's why I'm standing up to say this, because I love promoting brands. That's been the core of my business for nine years. And my company can barely, barely compete in this environment when, and not just my company, by the way, lots of other e-commerce companies and lots of other product and brand creators. Because as soon as people stop doing this, which they will, if the second you have a great idea, it gets knocked off on Amazon. Um, and, and, you know, and I'm using Amazon as, a, as an example uh, because I understand how they work and I understand um, that it is very allowed with the third-party um, sellers right now. Um, what I'm not saying is they're not trying, but they're obviously not trying hard enough. The problem has gone on for years. And there are a lot of other places where you can go and get authentic products, a.k.a. the retail stores, Nordstrom, um, you know, Macy's, those kinds of places. Um, obviously, when you can see it in person, um, it's very different. So um, anyway... Uh, thank you for all the shares, you guys. I, um, there's a lot of comments, and this is really fun for me, so I'm missing a lot of what you guys were saying. At JS, it seems like the good guys keep getting screwed. It is so true. Because some people don't realize to create something, um, it, it's so much cheaper to manufacture uh, things than what you know, you're know you actually paying for. So um, when products come directly from the factory um, and they're not authentic, it creates a really horrible problem in retail. Um, Adam, maybe we need a recognition for quality product like food, certified organic, maybe out with that exact, exactly. Chris Strub, Jana just got here. Can you recap real quick? Yes. I'm going to end the broadcast in just a second so that, um, I'm going to come back tomorrow and give some more information. But Chris, the long and short of this broadcast was I helped users understand that counterfeit, uh, products are a huge problem on Amazon. And... I gave the five tips on what you can do to make sure that you are most likely getting an authentic product. And I'm basically um, standing up for product inventors and encouraging people to buy from places that, um, that they know for sure they're getting um, the real product. So anyway, thanks for being here, Chris. Thanks for being here, Chana. I wanna see if I can actually um, say hello to everybody that is here, but it doesn't look like Oh, yes. Okay. Thanks for watching. Haley, Chana, Chris, Janice, Emily, Kristen, Adam, Griselle, Michelle, Camille, Melody, Audria, JS, Dylan, Cami, and it says plus eight. So anyway, thanks for watching, you guys. Um, thanks for uh, supporting me. Hopefully this has been um, good information. Let me see if I can get back to the comments here so I don't missing any. Oops, write a comment. Ah! <laughs> okay. Now I've messed it all up. Here we go. All right, let me scroll back down. Anyway, it's, uh, this has been really fun. Thanks for participating. I really appreciate it. Again, share it if you can. I'm going to come back tomorrow and talk more about um, 
reviews on Amazon and how you can, um, you know, navigate those um, to make sure that you are getting a real, um, the, the best chance at getting a real product. So hope you all have a great evening. Much love to you all. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.